All right, this is another simple signaling game uh, where the nature moves first, determine the type of player 1, T1, T2, with probabilities 0 0.7, 0 0.3. Then each type has two actions, left or right, and the second player, player 2, cannot distinguish the type of player 1, uh, whether it's T1 on T or T2, but he can observe the action of the player 1, whether it's left or right. So if it is right or left, chooses U or D, two actions he has, and these are the payoffs as given. So the question is, find all perfect Bayesian equilibrium in pure strategies. All right, so this is going to be a relatively uh, faster version of uh, of, of my solution, um, but the slower versions um, are already uh, there. Uh, so if you need to understand every single detail, uh, please refer to my other videos. But this one is sort of more compact and, and faster uh, version. So we always start with separating equilibria because it's easier. So the first question is, is there any separating equilibrium where player one or type one. So I'm gonna put type one always first and then type two. So type one plays R, type two plays left. Can this ever be a part of a perfect Bayesian equilibrium? And then the second, another separating equilibrium. Well, this time the roles are reversed, uh, left, right. And then the, that's it. We can't have any other separating equilibria. The pooling equilibria, can, can there be any pooling equilibrium where both play left or where they both play right, okay? So that's it. Well, the first thing, uh, right, left. So given this information, all right, I know that according to Bayes' rule, P must be equal to one, therefore Q must be equal to zero because uh, this must be the decision note. So given this, uh, player two is gonna believe that he's right here, and so therefore his optimal strategy is U here, and, and here, given that he believes he's at this decision node, his optimal choice is D, so therefore DU. I always put uh, the strategies on the left part of the game first, and then the right part of the game, so DU. All right? so it means D here, U here, all right? So this is the second player's st strategy. So the question is, are these best responded by right and left, all right? Okay. Uh, so D, uh, U here, all right, and then D here. Uh, let's put those arrows. Well, given that this is how they play, player type one is getting three payoff by choosing R, but instead if he has chosen left, he would get zero. So obviously uh, T1 best responding by playing R. Good. What about T2? By choosing left, he knows he's gonna get two. If he were to choose right, however, he would get uh, two again. So therefore, T2 is also best responding by playing left. And hence, you know what? I got one separating equilibria. All I have to do is to bring them together, uh, right, left, uh, by the players, and then DU by the second player, and then P equals one, Q equals zero. This is how I basically uh, construct the first separating equilibria. Let's look at the second separating equilibria, left, right. Obviously, I have to get rid of those arrows because everything will probably change, okay? So this time, left guy is the type one, and the right guy is uh, type two. So given this, P must be equal to zero, Q must be equal to one, so P zero means player two believes he's gonna be at this decision node, so therefore he's gonna play D here, and then he's going to believe that Q equals one, so he's at this decision node, which basically means he's gonna play D here. So DD is going to be the second player's optimal strategies. Given that, is LR best response? Well, the type one is playing left and hence, uh, put the arrow here, don't forget. And here it's also D, put the arrows here. It makes easier to follow the payoffs. So by playing left, he gets zero, 
but if he were to play R, he would get one. So therefore, type one is not best responding. Hence, no such separating equilibrium. I mean, what about type two? I don't know, I don't care. Type one is not best responding by playing left. Playing R it definitely gives him a higher payoff and hence uh, the entire equilibrium thing collapse because uh, requirement two will not hold for one of the types. So therefore we cannot have such uh, separating equilibrium. That's it. Well, is there any uh, pooling equilibrium of this form left left? Again, erase all the arrows because I am sure we're going to change the arrows. All right. Um, so what do we have LL? So both guys are choosing left. Okay. When this is the case, this type, I'm sorry, this place, uh, the P is a free parameter, but Q has to be transferred from the nature's move, 0 0.7, 0 0.3. Okay, uh, the player two, what is her optimal choice here at least? Well, if she chooses U, she will always get zero. If she chooses D, she will always get one. So therefore playing D here is the best response. By the way, Q must be equal to 0 0.7. You can uh, write that. P is a for now free parameter, for now. And then here on the left side, D is always the best response. All right. What about here? Uh, I don't know, because it totally depends on Q, right? Uh, and P, I'm sorry, because U is sometimes better uh, than uh, uh, D, but sometimes D is better than U. Okay, so I don't know what the second guy is going to play, but even with this limited information, can I say uh, LL is the best response for both types? Let's see. If he, I mean, by choosing left, type 1 is getting 0. But you know what, if he were to play right, he would get either one or three, depending on uh, the second player's strategy. But doesn't matter what he gets, uh, what he plays, the payoff player one, type one, will get here on the right hand side, always higher than zero. So you know what, T1 is not best responding, all right? So therefore, uh, there is no such pooling equilibria, pooling equilibrium. That's it. Very good. And then the final uh, scenario where uh, both types choose R, not L. Okay. Uh, so let's put those arrows this time here. Okay. Well, once we have this, again, P must be equal to 0.7. Q is for now free parameter. Let's not touch it yet. Well, what about the optimal strategies? Well, um, you can calculate the expected payoffs I want because uh, by playing U, let's, let's do it. By playing U, you're gonna get one with probability 0.7 plus zero with probability 0.3. And by playing D, however, you're gonna get zero with probability 0.7, a bigger probability and one with probability 0.3. So this is nothing but uh, 0.7. This is nothing but 0.3. So obviously U is in expected terms better. So he's going to play U here. All right, U, very good. What about here? Well, my previous analysis, remember, has shown me D is always better than U. I mean, regardless of Q value, I mean, look at it. Whether you're here or here, does it matter? D always gives you one, U always gives you zero. So you should always play D in this part of the game. So therefore, the second player strategy must be DU. Good. Uh, well, the question is, is R our best response for type one and type two? Let's check. By playing R, type one is getting three. If he were to play L, he would get zero. Clearly R is better, so type one is best responding. Good. What about type 2? By playing R, he's getting 2. If he were to choose left, he would get 2. So you know what? The same thing, I mean. T2 is also best responding. So that's it. Requirement 2 is fully satisfied for both type 1, type 2, 
and player two. So all I have to, I found one pooling equilibria. I have to find the value of Q because that's the only parameter that's missing here. Uh, well, what should be the value of Q? Well, requirement one doesn't put any restriction. Requirement two doesn't put because it's off the, uh, I'm sorry, it has nothing to do with requirement two. Requirement two is about sequential rationality. I mean, everybody best responses one another. Requirement three doesn't put any restriction because it's off the equilibrium path. Requirement four doesn't put any restriction because L and L strategies are supposed to happen with probability zero. And so you cannot calculate Q by using the Bayes rule, okay? Um, so I, I erased these because those 0 0.7, 0.3s were uh, from the, the third part of, the, uh, my, of my analysis. So you know what, therefore, uh, there is no constrained restriction on the value of Q. And hence, Q is literally a free parameter. Q is a free parameter. Parameter. Um, I mean, the optimal strategy for the second player here also doesn't depend on P, uh, Q. Hence, it is a free parameter. Uh, completely free uh, parameter. Well, what does that mean? Let's let's conclude. Well, here is the PBE pooling PBE, RR type one and type two, DU uh, player two, and then P and then Q equals. Oh, I'm sorry. P equals uh, 0.7 and Q, uh, where. Q is a number between 0 and 1, is a pooling perfect Bayesian equilibrium of this game. So any Q in this range is going to give me a pooling equilibrium. So we have infinitely many of them. All right, so that's it. Uh, the, the summary, we have one separating equilibrium uh, where uh, type 1 chooses right, type 2 chooses left, here the player 2 plays D, here the player 2 plays U, and these are the beliefs. And we have infinitely many pooling equilibria of this form. That's it. I hope that was clear.